Okay. So, so we've been studying um, about preparing a message, and um, we've been looking at um, some of these, uh, you know, some some truths about how God uh, draws out, you know, some of these practical things, um, which which are really helpful for us. So, so we can really flow in preparing uh, a message where we don't have to. You know, every time we think about ministering God's word, um, and we don't have to, you know, bring ourselves under a lot of pressure, unnecessary pressure. Uh, so it can be an ongoing, smooth, ongoing thing where we are receiving from Him and uh, receiving revelation from Him, receiving these words, um, instructions from Him, and we're making it part of our lives. We are living it out. And um, uh, he writes out these things in our hearts, and it really forms, uh, uh, you know, volumes of uh, revelation right, about God. Every time we look at a scripture, you know, you're reminded of those things that he has spoke, he's spoken to you. You're reminded of those things that um, you know how it worked in your life, uh, and and on. Right. So we we saw some of those practical things, like how God draws out how the Lord draws out the things that he's already put in our hearts. So the key to preparing a message is really to have a consistent walk of uh, of putting in uh, or having a rich deposit of God's word in our hearts. You know, not just the, uh, the logos or the principles of it, but really uh, um, the quickened word, right? Which, uh, which whom God is, uh, which God has highlighted for us, and then uh, we put into practice, and we, we, you know, enjoyed those um, victories and so on. Um, we also looked at how we need to depend on the Holy Spirit, how we need, uh, you know, a word in season, a quickened word, etc. And uh, and we started by looking at how there can be different types of sermons. Right? different types of sermons and uh, knowing it really um, helps us to um, helps us to well if god is leading in a certain direction if he's giving a word if he's giving a particular scripture you know how do i how do i communicate that right so knowing that there are different types of sermons really helps us so we we said okay you looked at the topical sermon the topical sermon is uh, is that it's based on a topic it is. Um, it is. Uh, so this. Uh, it can be a topic in the sense. Uh, uh, either the topic comes to us in the sense in the in the kind of a problem, right? There's a problem in society. There's a problem with this particular thing. Uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, certain. You know, you see in certain circles that, uh, um, or certain you know parts of a country that, okay, this seems to be the problem here. You know, socially, this seems to be a problem here. There's. Uh, uh, well, the men are not working, or you know, uh, the men are in some form of addiction and, and not really helping things at home. And um, even when you know, so, so something like that, for example, you know, you could, it could be that. And and so, uh, a topical sermon would probably address that. Right. So uh, that can be a topic. And uh, for the topical sermon, the points of the sermon are gathered from. You know, based on the topic, right? Maybe describing the problem, uh, describing what causes the problem, um, uh, and also describing the solution that is in the word, and uh, how to uh, bring that solution to power. How to apply the solution, right? The answers that are there in the word. How how it how to apply it so that it solves the problem. So, you know, a typical topical sermon would have that kind of a format right uh, if it's something to do with a problem that needs to be addressed so it is based on the topic the scriptures and the uh, you know can be drawn from anywhere in the word uh, to support to substantiate the points that you are making right uh, even while describing the problem or in bringing a, a, a solution it can be from anywhere in the word right so so that's a topical uh, sermon uh, there are advantages to it. Um, the constraints of it would be okay. You're you're you know constraining yourself. You're restraining yourself to that topic, 
and to that topic alone and uh, so that that could be one of the constraints but it's it has its advantages where you're bringing focus to particular that particular issue right um, so so that's the thing um, one other uh, side of it is that um, you may not be able to completely you know exhaust the depths of what is there uh, in that particular topic right so there there might be because of various things you know time um, receptivity of the audience and and also like we said the spiritual level right uh, there could be a lot more but then at that point you can only probably share a little bit of uh, of that topic so you know, that's anyway that goes with it then we could have a textual sermon the textual sermon is where there is a particular scripture or uh, a verse or a couple of verses or even you know a very short passage um, which you are for which uh, you know there is explanation exposition based on that text by text we mean the scripture verse or verses so it could be two, three verses at the most, and and uh, there is an explanation of that text, right? a descriptive explanation of the text, and uh, and so uh, you know there is an application part also uh, because this this is what the text means, this is what the text is encouraging us to do, and this is these are some of the things that we see here, so we can actually go ahead and do this. Right? So that's the textual uh, sermon. So all the points again here are derived from the text. So normally that that is how it would be. They are derived from the text and not from outside of the text. Okay. Well, in certain cases, you know, to um, uh, to support or give weightage to, you know, uh, what has already been uh, said, we could. You know, take from another text. So this also, you know, is mentioned here. Um, let's say we are talking about, uh, let's say, the peace of God. You know, so we could uh, uh, maybe we are we are sharing from Philippians four, and we are talking about uh, um, how the peace of God uh, will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, we are talking about Philippians four and verse uh, um, verses six and seven, maybe, and, and a lot of things that we the points are there. You know, how they. The exhortation to not be anxious, uh, what to do in times of anxiety, prayer and supplication. There is thanksgiving, and we take it to God, and uh, and this is what will happen. So we were talking about the peace of God. Maybe we want to share about something else re related to the peace of God, and um, uh, you know, we, maybe we're, we're talking about uh, uh, how uh, we're called to, we are invited for this peace to rule and reign in our hearts. Through the Holy Spirit, and you're talking about that. Maybe uh, we're we're you know quoting from the Old Testament also to saying that the Lord will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, and and so on. So we might borrow, I mean, or or uh, substantiate what we're saying from other uh, scriptures as well. Okay, there's nothing hard and fast, but it's just a guideline, right? Okay, so you're just describing the text and bringing everything from the text. So that's a textual sermon. Okay, um, so it's like you said, it's it's ideal, you know, for a maybe like a Bible study. Uh, uh, it's it's really ideal. Okay, for this evening, we're just looking at this, and and uh, you know, since we're looking at the Word of God and the Holy Spirit illumination of the Word of God, it's it's inspiring, right? Something inspiring that can be our eyes are open to the truth. It's revelatory, and uh, there's something for us to take home and apply and work on so all that happens okay then then another, another uh, form of uh, sermon is the expository sermon okay so the expository sermon would mean uh, uh, a portion of scripture or you know a passage okay so it can be uh, uh, it can be addressing a particular topic uh, but it's not a topical sermon because it's not based on the topic, but it's based on the text itself. Right? But it's not a textual sermon because it's it's an extended portion of text. Right? It's not just one verse or two verses, but it's an extended portion. And there will be, of course, um, we we might be for the most part, you know, uh, constrained to what the text is saying. 
Okay, so it's a study of the text itself. It's an exposition of the text, right? So that is why we call it an expository sermon. We are asking questions based on what we read in the text, and we're explaining the um, the text, right? So uh, an expository sermon, one in which which has a more or less extended portion of scripture, and uh, the interpretation is related to uh, one theme or one subject. Okay. So um, it can be even a whole chapter. It can be a couple of chapters. Uh, a classic example uh, would be, you know, one Corinthians, uh, maybe twelve, thirteen, fourteen, right? Gifts of the Spirit and the use of gifts in the church. So it's a fairly uh, extended passage, but it's talking about one thing, right? It starts by saying, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant of spiritual gifts. And that's how the whole thing starts. And he's, he's, there's one thread throughout. It is about the gifts. It is about the use of the gifts. It's about how, it's an explanation about the different kinds of gifts, how they should be used in church, how it should not be used in church. And even if you are gifted, if you, if you do not have this characteristic, which is God kind of love, then it's it's of no use, right? So the greatest of it is love, and then he goes on to say, pursue love, pursue this kind of love, and desire spiritual gifts, right? One Corinthians fourteen verse one, and and then goes on and on, and ends uh, at the end saying, you know, do not forbid to pray in tongues, um, and and that's how you know we see the end of that uh, chapter uh, or the other portion. So in expository uh, sermons, there is a you know, we are we are actually traveling. You know, taking time, traveling uh, verse by verse, um, and uh, you know, uh, so we are looking at every uh, everything in depth, in detail. Why did he say that? Uh, what is the context in which he say that? He says that. So, because if we take that verse out of context, then it, you know, it it really uh, creates a lot of confusion and. Uh, there are some, you know, some verses there which which talks about, you know, um, about the gift of tongues, and uh, and there are some verses there talking about being quiet, uh, women, you know, uh, forbidding women to speak in church, and and so on. So so those things. Uh, uh, so the context is studied so that the text is clear, and so it's a, it, uh, it. The advantage is that it results in. Uh, an audience or a congregation who's actually journeying with the church, right? Or even otherwise, but definitely, if you know, if a, if a congregation is there rooted in that church and they're journeying along, uh, so the, it results in the congregation being well informed, uh, nurtured, established in these kind of things you know, established in scripture so it results in that so it's a it's a very good way of uh, you know we can actually have one of those or more of these um, during a course of you know maybe a year and uh, it really helps the congregation become rooted in scripture right so instead of saying okay somewhere it says uh, so and so I know somewhere it uh, I've read it you know the congregation actually knows because you're taking time to go through that you're taking time to address those questions and I just, it's, again you know there is one dominant theme throughout uh, throughout that right so um, yeah so expository um, uh, sermon uh, very useful very beneficial and uh, we can you know use it in our uh, congregations, right? Um, uh, the thing with the expository sermon is going to take time. Again, it may not be, you cannot do certain things in within an hour. Uh, maybe it, it will take more than an hour. So be mindful of that, you know, when you are uh, attempting an extra expository uh, sermon, right? So like the example given in the notes is uh, Ephesians 6, uh, about spiritual warfare, spiritual conflict, the weapons of warfare. Now that can be maybe addressed in 45 minutes or so, um, going into the details of it. But there could be others like the you know gifts of the spirit, which which can which needs some more time, right, to address the topic sufficiently and in depth. So be mindful of that when you uh, when you think about uh, introducing you know, that kind of a teaching, right. 
Okay, so what is the difference between a textual and a expository sermon? What is the difference between these? It, because it both are based out of the text. So what is the basic difference? One one main difference is the, the portion of scripture that we are considering, where where, where um, textual sermon could be uh, you know just maybe a verse, a couple of verses at most. Um, an expository sermon would be uh, an extended portion of scripture. So that could be a uh, like a, a major uh, difference, um, and uh, and also the points are taken, you know, from for a textual sermon, the points are mostly taken from that text itself, uh, and uh, it also has maybe some uh, uh, some examples from other or some scriptures from other portions of script from other portions of the word. Right, for the text to to substantiate it, we might use that. Um, whereas in the expository sermon, it will be more most likely to have all the substantiation from the passage itself. Right, most likely, uh, unless uh, in certain cases where you absolutely need to quote. Right. Okay. Fine. So these are some basic big differences between textual and uh, and expository sermon now again in studying these things these are uh, you know we're going to look at the mechanics of sermon construction uh, to study them you know the types of sermons and also the mechanics of sermons construction these are just guidelines right these are guidelines uh, and why do we have these guidelines it will help us prepare better it will help us uh, address these topics better, minister, communicate these things better in a better way uh, to the advantage of the listener, right? Um, so that is that is why we have these guidelines. But there are nothing, there's no hard and fast thing that, you know, it has to be this way, right? Uh, well, some really follow, follow it stringently. You know, some speakers, um, it's, had, you know, the, the three-point, famous three-point uh, messages uh, like Charles Wesley, you know, um, the method of Methodist speaker would speak the three point messages, uh, illustrations, you know, application, and then some, some very stringently follow that. Uh, well, so that's the thing, you know, you you pick and choose. Uh, it's a guideline. Okay. Uh, okay. So when we come, uh, when we look at uh, mechanics of sermon construction, okay, this is a note, but um, quote by um, Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Um, his his sermons are really, you know, if you study the um, Spurgeon's uh, sermons, which are of course written, uh, we don't have. I don't think we have any recordings because it's, you know, it's really old. Um, but these are really works of art, you know. So so very well explained, very well, very articulate. Um, so Spurgeon says, you know, habitually to come into the pulpit underprepared is unpardonable presumption. Okay, because many times what happens is, uh, you know, the Lord Jesus did say that when you are brought to, when you are persecuted and brought to stand before kings, before councils, um, don't premeditate on what to say. Okay. Uh, so at that time, it will be given what you need to share, what you need to say. So, um, so, so that refers to a particular scenario where you know you're thinking, oh, what should I say? How should I defend myself? What should I do? Uh, when the Lord says, the Holy Spirit will actually give you the words to speak, will give you the wisdom to speak, and what you should do, what you, should, you know, how you should defend, uh, what you should testify. The Holy Spirit will give you. He's talking about the Spirit. Um, so. To take that and say, you know, I will come with a blank slate, uh, you know, to the every time to the podium, I'll come with a blank slate. God, I'm your spokesperson. You speak to me, then, uh, then I'll, you know, I'll speak it out. Is is not advisable, right? Um, we need to have spent time preparing, um, like we see in Proverbs, the preparations of the heart belong to man but the answer of the tongue is from the lord so we need to prepare we need to study we need to put together and well the lord will direct it as he wants based on you know what how he knows best um he will he will direct it right direct the whole 
flow of things but we need to be prepared okay so that's the thing i'm sure you know there are there are times when we're just called upon to speak to share and you surprise yourself i remember one one time when we this is actually a, a relatives uh, this was a baby shower right so uh, they're expecting so they called and all of um, and we went and uh, so they said why don't you sing some songs okay fine so there was a guitar so we sang some songs um and then uh, and then he said uh, you know why don't you just uh, share something uh, but earlier itself he had told me you know so i told him you know you you better plan that whom you want to share he said yeah yeah yeah, yeah sure so since i was there he just said uh, why don't you share and uh, and I, I was like totally uh, in a spot, right? Um, so, um, so the thing was, uh, what came to my heart at that time was uh, you know, season. That the couple, for the couple with the baby, is going to be a change in season for them. And uh, so also a change in season of this couple, um, because of the arrival of the baby, is going to be a change in season for everyone. Like the parents of the couple are becoming grandparents. And uh, here, this couple, they are becoming parents for the first time and, and all that, right? So, um, so priorities, everything changes. So I just shared a little bit about seasons and being equipped for that. And uh, yeah, thanks for the grace of God, you know. Um, so grateful for that. So, the, so there could be moments like that. Right. But but to go underprepared and to go totally unprepared is uh, is not advisable at all. No, in fact, we should avoid doing that because we'll be doing ourselves and uh, the audience a great disservice. Right? God has appointed us as overseers, maybe, and God has given up given us this opportunity. Um, so it's 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 best. That we spend time, you know, personally preparing, personally um, waiting on the Lord, uh, allowing the Word to go through us, and uh, putting the Word, uh, applying the Word in our own lives, uh, and teaching, right? Um, practicing and then teaching. Okay, so when we look at um, uh, sermon construction, okay, so um, there are different, well, parts of a sermon and the one which is uh, really obvious and um, which is important these days is a title right giving a title for a message for a sermon okay now uh, giving a title maybe it was not so very important you know those days in the, in the past um, well what, what does a title do title actually gives you announces uh, about what the topic is, right? Announces or it gives information about what the message that follows it, you know, some information about that. A title also, you know, if it's a interesting title, it also stirs up your curiosity. You know, you you're expecting. I, I want to listen. What what is it? Uh, you know, a title like, uh, you know, is God relevant in this age? You know, uh, or the God delusion, let's say a title like that, okay? And you're going to be, you know, it's like a very apologetics kind of a message, the God delusion. So that'll really, uh, a delusion is, you know, you're holding on to something that is false, um, despite, you know, whatever strong evidence that you have to the contrary, right? So so if there's a message like, you know, um, the God delusion or is God dead, that is definitely to stir up Going to stir up the curiosity of the person, you know, both believers and unbelievers alike. What does this person have to say? What does he have to say about this? So, a title, you know, helps that. It kind of advertises. It uh, it gives focus to what the message is about, right? Um, but in our day and time, with social media, and uh, you know, a, a whole whole lot of things that um, uh, if if you want to reach out right to the uh, people 
uh, or reach out to the unreached with this message. It helps to have a, a good title. Okay, it helps to have a title that is like let's it, say if it's going to be an evangelistic message and you want your audience to be mostly uh, unchurched or uh, non-Christian people who have not uh, known Christ. So if you want the message to be uh, to be reaching to them, then the title needs to be suitably so you know, with the audience in mind. Okay, with the audience in mind, and you, so you you can't have a very church, you know, a, a churchy kind of a title. And when we say a churchy kind of title, it's like you know that as believers, as people in church, we have a certain language. We use words like anointing, glory, uh, you know, uh, spirit led, all this. We we use it, but it it means nothing to or it it the person who does not know Christ does not understand it. Words like glory, words like anointing, words like uh, you know, even the thing like the word. Uh, for the person, it's, it's just you know a word. I put string, uh, you know, you're putting some alphabets together, which makes sense. That's a word. So, so they don't they don't think too much about it. But then, if you use language, if you use language that is relevant, if you use language that is appropriate uh, for the audience, which stirs up their curiosity then it will be a good title. And in the day of social uh, media, a title really helps, right? Because there's a lot of hashtags which goes, you know, and uh, you can put some hashtags, also relevant hashtags. And uh, and so when people search, you know, this also comes up, right, as one of the things. And a good title really helps people to click on it. You know, people's attention span is very less, um, you know, more and more. Uh, when it comes to electronic media, when it comes to you know watching things online, um, their attention span is very very less, right? So, but um, this grabs their attention if uh, if it is something that stirs up the curiosity, and they're going to they're going to watch for a few seconds, maybe thirty seconds at the most, fifteen seconds, and if it's interesting, then they'll stay on. But that first. 15 seconds or 20 seconds is all that the audience gives you um, to make their own assessment and to move on to something else, to click on something else, to close the window, right? So, so uh, in this day of uh, you know this kind of uh, environment in social media, where all our messages we we put it out um, uh, in in the you know in this space so that it can reach out and be beneficial for more minister for more people. So we, it is a privilege, it's an advantage, uh, but also it comes with its challenge, right? So so having a good title helps, okay? So so what are some guidelines? Uh, if you're following in your notes, we're looking at uh, chapter four, the mechanics of servant, uh, sorry, servant construction. So what are some guidelines for choosing a title, okay? Um, so, the, one of the things is let the title reflect the main theme of the message in some way. Okay, let it not be so obscure that uh, you really don't know what the message is going to be, right? Uh, because that will also, you know, people might, if they don't really understand, they might lose interest also. But let it reflect the main theme, okay, of the message. Uh, it should not obscure the content, but actually throw light, draw people to the content of the message. It should be simple. Okay, simple meaning it, it should not be very verbose. It's a title, so it, it can be a sentence at the most, but not be one paragraph, right? It's a, it's a title. It can be a word, it can be a phrase, uh, a short sentence uh, at the most, right? Um, the title should complement the message. The title actually provides a good atmosphere or a good ambience for the sermon. It sets the tone for the sermon. Um, and a title could be formed, put in the form of a question. A title could be a phrase. Um, and it could relate to some you know, uh, special occasion, etc. Okay, so so all this goes into making a good title. So so yeah, so I just want us to uh, think of some 
sermon, uh, some topic that you want your sermon to be on. Okay. And uh, based on what we looked at right now, why don't you arrive at a title? Okay, so we'll do that as an exercise right now. Um, in right now, so you think of a theme. Okay, what do you want your sermon to be? What do you want to preach on? Okay, it could be a topical sermon. It could be a let's say textual sermon. Uh, anything. Okay, let's for for simplicity. You know, let's let's let's. Keep it as a topical sermon. So it's on some topic. Um, uh, maybe it's you know, it's about Christian marriage. Maybe it's about faith. Maybe it's about love. Maybe it's about some. It's a topic that you're looking at. Okay, so that's the topic. Um, so arrive at a topic. Okay, so think about a topic that you want to preach on, and uh, based on that topic, arrive at a title. Okay, let's say you want to preach on the topic of love. Well, the to the title should be something appropriate, something interesting, because there's a lot that has been preached on love. Okay, it should be simple. It should not obscure. And uh, if it's going to be for believers as audience, then well, you can use the vocabulary, you know, the words uh, accordingly. But if it's going to be for, you know, and uh, it's going to be an evangelistic message about the love of God, and uh, then you need to use your words uh, appropriately, you know, that it's knowing that it's an audience which does not come to church, does not know Christ. So how are you going to change that? So um, wait, I'm just going to give five minutes, okay? I'm going to take five minutes to arrive at a topic and also to arrive at a title okay so uh, you can put it on the chat you can put your uh, firstly you can i mean you can put the topic and then the title two lines so first line is the topic what is the topic that you're addressing in your sermon the second line would be the title of the sermon okay so we'll take five minutes now it's uh, yeah it's 11:33 so we'll take time till 11.38, 11.39 at the most, and uh, we can put it here. Okay, so we're going to take some time to do that. Okay. Uh, five minutes, so I'll come back at the end of five minutes. So don't log off, stay on, and, uh, and we'll look at okay, the topic and the title. Oh, uh, I hope everybody understood it, right? Yes, boss. Yeah. Uh, so I don't want to come back to some questions about the about this whole exercise, right? So, topic and title. Okay, go ahead, please.
Okay. So we have uh, quite a few entries here. Okay. So Elisha, salvation and Jesus saves. Okay. Salvation is the topic um, and Jesus saves is the title. Okay. Um, yeah. That's a pretty straightforward uh, title and topic. Um, I mean, pretty straightforward title. Um, but you can also think of how to creatively, um, you know, uh, refine the title. Jesus saves is very simple, very uh, straightforward, right? For maybe for a person who is an unbeliever who is not even considering Jesus, you know, um, how would you make that title interesting? Think about it. Okay, so Zelitoli demons and how to cast out demons, right? So obviously. Uh, your uh, sermon is directed towards a, uh, a church audience. So how to cast out demons, question mark, right? So that's that would how it would lead. Um, yeah, okay. Then violence among the youth, destroying the foundation. Okay. Um, so destroying the foundation is the title. And there's violence among the youth. Okay, fine. Um, Rosalind is talking about fear, and uh, the title is Perfect Love Casts Out Fear. Okay, right. Um, um, uh, Isaac, probably you can. Um, uh, violence among the youth. So, what is the audience? Is it a. Christian audience? Is it like a mixed crowd that you are going to be, or the sermon is addressed to us? If you can just let us know. Um, could you unmute and just share that? Yes, like, let's say mixed audience. Okay, so it's the church and also, yeah, okay. Okay, and the title is Destroying the Foundation. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, I understood it now. Okay, so fear, perfect loud cast of fear. Okay, then, so that's again uh, a textual title, no? Perfect, the verse itself. Okay, so John Paul, um, victory over addictions, bad habits, walking in freedom. Okay, and the title is You Are an Overcomer. Okay, very positive, very motivational kind of thing. And then, um, so it doesn't, uh, the title, the words uh, don't give us actually any information about what kind of things that I overcome, right? So it's a, um, so that also you can think about. Oh, uh, one more thing that I just wanted to mention was because we, you know, use in social media, etc. Uh, the graphic also, you know, the the design, the picture, the visual also plays a very important part. Okay, so that's, uh, that which wasn't there many years ago, but then now, you know, it goes without saying that, you know, when you have a powerful visual, uh, a good picture, a graphic design, and on, on that, when you have the title, you know, it adds so much to it, right? So maybe the visual, here can uh, you know can actually portray that you know whatever addictions bad habits work, working freedom because the title itself doesn't talk about uh, what kind of uh, things that you're overcoming okay so paul uh, family is the title sorry topic and then yeah you've also written down the topic is okay so it has to be you don't have to say the topic is something right uh, the the oh sorry Oh, what is it? I... Yeah, Paul. So, um, so you're saying family is the topic, and uh, the title is uh, "Storms of Life in Families." Okay, right. Okay, so Anita is a creation, and God is our creator. Okay. So, if you want to address a non-Christian crowd, you can make it even more, you know, like a little more thought-provoking, um, you can ask you know, a question, you know, is God our creator? 
something like that. You're talking about creation, and I, I guess you are going to be, you know, giving some proof, giving some evidence uh, from scripture um, for supporting uh, creation. For so, um, the title can be, you know, kind of thought provoking. It can be, is God really our creator? Or you know, something like that would help. Question mark. Right. Okay. So, Lubega, kingdom parables is a topic. Uh, Okay, kingdom parables, and the title is the parable of a sower. So you're going to be talking about one parable. Okay, and uh, the parable of a sower. Okay, just think about it. See, the the thing is, the parable of the sower. It's it's very straightforward. Like there's no doubt in a person's mind that you're not going to talk about this uh, parable of the sower. So. Which is fine, which is also fine, but you can also think of any other way by which to communicate. You know, I know we had five minutes uh, to come up with this, but if you have any other, you know, you can work on this, right? Okay. Um, so, Jeffina, living life is the title. Um, okay. Or maybe it's the other way around. Right? Living life is a topic. Okay, that's that's the subject that you are addressing, and to address that subject of living life, then your the title is this God's pattern of life. These are some options that you are considering. It's all about Jesus. Apart from Him, you can do nothing. Okay. Right. God's pattern. Okay. Fine. Um, crazy. Lyndon, Leah Lama, uh, you know, you guys also think about it, right? So um, you, you can, you know, think about the topic, think about the title. So what I'll do is I'll share this, uh, you know, Google Sheet with us. Um, so it will have your name, sermon topic, sermon title. Um, and, you know, it will just keep expanding, okay, as we go along. Um, so you think about it. Now, this is what you came up with. It's good. I think, oh, yeah. Okay. Some more. Right. Uh, Lubega principles of management, parable of tenants. Okay. So you're, you're thinking of a series, is it? Kingdom parables. Okay. For now, let's just think of one, uh, one message, right? So whatever it is that you decide on, uh, just one, okay. One topic one title let's just come with come up with that and uh, so i'll share this um, uh, you know I'll, I'll just let me just show you that um, yeah so i'll i'll share this uh, google sheet i'll put the put up the link in the stream so you can go there write your full name and uh, your Topic, sermon topic, what is the subject that you wish to address? Um, and also write in here the sermon title. Okay. So the thing is this as part of our, um, oops, as part of our, um, you know, our uh, biblical preaching class, um, each of us will be presenting a sermon. That's the, uh, that's one part of the assessment, right? Um, like if it's in person, class you will actually be doing it uh, right there so uh, but since we some so most of us are online you will be recording it and uh, and uploading it in the google drive i'll you know share information on how to do that when we come to that um, but as a first step you know you decide on what is it that you want to speak on and what is the title that you want to give for that sermon you know as we go through this uh, topic of mechanics of sermon construction um you can you know keep developing it so you keep it you know you you keep a rec record of it and as we go through sermon construction you can you know keep developing it expanding it and then the end of it you will have a sermon outline and you can you know uh, further refine it and preach out of that sermon outline uh, for the online students, it will be recorded. For the e-learning students also, um, you will, you know, uh, at one point you will record it and upload it, 
there will be instructions on what to do and you know you'll be uh, there'll be assessment of it okay okay so so you know what to do um, i'll share this google sheet for e learning students um, this uh, there will be this um, google sheet on your discussion right on your discussion thread uh, we will uh, uh, give uh, um, you can actually put it on the discussion itself discussion thread itself what is the topic and what is the title right e learning students you could do that okay so um, let's uh, yeah we'll stop here uh, continue to you know i know you've given this this you don't have to you know stick with it you can work out a different thing maybe you feel that okay uh, you'd like to address some other topic um, and also some other title you want to give it that's also fine okay right okay we'll stop here thank you god bless we'll meet again Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you.